Hi guys, welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today, guys, today, I'm going to be talking about my November TBR. And also, because it is sadly short, I'm going to go ahead and be talking about my planned channel read-alongs for next year. So all of you people who plan in advance, and let's really be honest, <laughs> really, really, I'm about six months too late with this because most of y'all have already booked up 2024 anyway, except you blessed few, uh, three and four times blessed, uh, who are waiting to see what I'm doing because you want to read books with me. So I appreciate that. But if you have not made plans, this is your chance to join a channel read-along. That's right, they're back. Uh, I did not have any this year, really, but uh, last year, that was really the only thing successful about my channel was the fact that I had three, uh, four successful read-alongs. We read a trilogy each quarter. Uh, which was awesome, and it was the most fun I had last year. Um, I used to do several more on my channel, but if you know the lore, um, Brian Stavely destroyed my empire from within. So, <laughs> but without wasting any more time, let's get down to business. Let's go ahead and talk about the things I'm going to read this month and the stuff that you can jump on right here in advance uh, that we'll be reading uh, next year. But again. Let's, let's be honest about that also. Ain't nobody going to jump on it. Ain't nobody going to jump on it, no, no matter what I suggest. <laughs> it, it, I, I suggest all this stuff, and no, because the stuff I want to read just, I guess, isn't widely appealing. But that's okay. For those of you who are going to jump on it, it's going to be awesome. All right. So, um, I only read, like, one book in November or October, which is very sad. And it was book one of the Fencer Trilogy by K.J. Parker. That's right, K.J. Parker book, suck it, uh, called The Colors in the Steel. And, uh, you know, you can wait to see what I thought about it. But it's Parker's first book, K.J. Parker's first book, not Tom Holt's first book. But the first book he published under K.J. Parker. And it's filled with the stuff that's going to be his trademarks later as K.J. Parker. It reminded me of a lot of his, diff a lot of his other books. Uh, so book two... It will be on Boosh, The Belly of the Bow uh, by K.J. Parker. Book two of the Fencer Trilogy will be on the docket for um, November. I, in addition, I'm already reading uh, Grave Empire, which is an arc of the new book by Richard Swan, the author of Justice of Kings. And it is set, uh, I think, 100 years or so after the events of um, the Empire of the Wolf Trilogy, which ended with Trials of Empire. And it is flintlock fantasy. And... Guys, I am, you guys know, I'm on the quest for Flintlock Fantasy that one day will be completed, but I'm on the quest. In fact, my quest for Flintlock Fantasy is actually what led me to K.J. Parker, because I would, I would actually suggest that K.J. Parker has that Flintlock vibe, if not actually Flintlock, because they don't really have guns, but they certainly have cannon, uh, and, well, no, sometimes they have cannon, it really just depends. But, uh, yeah, there's black powder. And sometimes that doesn't always work out. And I don't know what it is about Flintlock Fantasy. The best one so far that I've read is Guns of the Dawn by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Go check it out and read it. I don't know why Flintlock doesn't have a standard bearer. And I realize that right now its standard bearer is uh, Promise of Blood, the Powder Mage trilogy, which is a cool concept. And as you know, I did not enjoy Promise of Blood all that much. I thought... The first 10 chapters are actually really good. The prologue is one of the best ever. And it just, I think it got away. And I don't, I don't think it really deserves its position there. So I'm, I keep waiting for the, the, the breakout Flintlock fantasy book. The Shadow Campaigns by Janglo Wexler should have been a runaway because Thousand Names is absolutely tremendous. I think it, it also falls apart a little toward the end of the series. Regardless. Grave Empire is set 100 years in the future in the Empire of the Wolf, and I don't know why Swan won't read K.J. Parker books. Oh, probably because I suggested it. But the stuff that he loves about, like, logistics in war, there's already a bunch of that right at the beginning. Now, don't let that turn, turn you off of it. Um, I, ju I just like all the stuff that, that is there at the, at the beginning. He doesn't actually spend pages talking about logistics the way Parker does, but still... So I'm, I'm currently reading that, so I'm going to read that and um, Belly of the Bow. Uh, in addition, got to finish the stuff that I didn't finish from the previous month, which is Pompeii, Curse of Chalion, my patron pick. And I think those, those are it. Yeah, and my 
Discord has decided they're also reading Nation by Terry Pratchett, which I also want to join in on, which is a standalone non-Discworld book by Pratchett. It's supposed to be really good, so I want to read that as well. So those are the things that I'll be reading in the month of November. Uh, the good thing is, is in November, uh, I do get Thanksgiving break, so I have I have some more time to read, which is awesome, but I'm also going to be using a lot of that time to record um, Prophet of Badan, book two of Philip's uh, trilogy that I, you know, have been commissioned to do the audiobook uh, for. All right, so from... January, February, and March, we are going to be reading Boosh, The Alchemy Wars. I think that's what it's called. Should I literally just look at it? Oh, got it. Um, by Ian Tregillis. And uh, the first book is The Mechanical. I don't know what the other two books are called, uh, but you can look it up. I, I This has been, again, one of my super early TBRs I found this series. And I, I ain't never heard anybody talk about this. I have heard people talk about, um, like, like the Milkweed series by Ian Tregillis. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Milkweed Triptych, uh, Bitter Seeds. Uh, it's like an alternate World War II book. But this is, anyway, um, this is about uh, the Dutch Protestants versus the Catholics. Uh, and I think the Pope has, like, like, like cyborg or android, like, mechs or something. Um, my name is Jax. That is the name granted to me by my human masters, but I'm a slave, but I shall be free. Set in a world that might have been, of mechanical men and alchemical dreams, the new novel from Ian Tregillis confirms his place as one of the new original voices in speculative fiction. I don't like the fact that there's like, it's not, it's not like a summary on the back, um, but I am fairly certain it, it's, it's Catholics versus Protestants, and um, metal men are being used to fight it. And so it is like alternate history, alternate history slash sci fantasy. Ah! Anyway, it looks really cool, and it could be really good. It could also be terrible, but you know what? All of the, the trilogies that we read two years ago were good, at least in some way. Um, so you know what? We're going to read it. We're going to start, we're gonna start the, the, the year off right with, um, with The Mechanical, and then February, we read book two, February, we read book three. Uh, so I haven't actually run this by anybody, so I don't know who will be uh, co-hosting with me. I, you know what? Pro maybe no one. So who knows? Who knows if someone wants to host with me? Otherwise, I'll just run a discussion by myself with anybody who, who read it. Uh, I'm hoping that it's really good, but we'll see. It, you know, I'm trying to offer like like four different like feel type things. Who knows? Um, I didn't want to start the year off with this one, but knowing how my schedule is in the month of March because of my state competition with my kids... Uh, I was not going to have the time to read this next series that we're going to do April, May, June, and July. I just wasn't going to have the time. I just knew I wasn't going to have the time because of the um, the sheer amount, uh, just the, the volume of the next ones. Because these next series is actually going to be a four-book series. We're actually doing a quartet here. In uh, I know, I know, change it up a little bit. We're going to do a quartet here in this um, from April, May, June, and July. It's going to be Boosh. Dreaming the Eagle by Amanda Scott. And this is the Boudicca Quartet. Um, now, these are long. This book is like 700, almost 700 pages. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm fairly certain the other ones aren't any shorter. So this is going to be a long commitment. However, however, uh, I have heard nothing. Like, I, have, I haven't heard anything but good things about this the Boudicca series. At least Dreaming the Eagle, the first one, for sure. The Brothers Gwyn cannot say enough good things about it. Now, I love the Brothers Gwyn but I feel like they led me astray on Gates of Fire because I did not enjoy Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield, and they like that a lot. But all the other stuff they like, I like. So, um, like, they love great coats. I also love great coats. So, uh, regardless of that, uh, we will be reading all four of those books. It is about the warrior queen Boudicca and her rebellion against Rome uh, under the Emperor Nero. And... Boudicca is actually, the Boudican Revolt is actually, I actually know, um, I don't know a ton about the Boudican Revolt. I know, I know how it begins, I know how it ends, uh, but Roman Britain is not a specialty of mine. I don't actually know as much about Roman Britain as I wish I did. And so I'm actually excited to read this because it's, I mean, it's just, it's supposed to be phenomenal. So I'm hoping that it will be really good. We have had mixed success with our uh, historical fictions. In the past, the Cicero trilogy that we read first in the, in the year of read-alongs was 
just phenomenal. It was so good. Like Robert Harris was just so good. Imperium, still one of my favorite books. So, so, so good. And Augustus by John Williams, absolutely tremendous. One of my favorite books ever. But then we have uh, Con Eagledon. My first Con Eagledon book was Nero, and it was I didn't like it much at all. And Lion of Macedon by David Gemmell, I didn't like. And Claudius the God, I did not like by Robert Graves. And Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield, I did not like. So I really struggle with this Greek and Roman historical fiction section. I don't know. I, I think part of it is that I, I'm aware of the time period, so it bothers me more when stuff is, is wrong, I guess. But I don't like to nitpick stuff. But I'm, I'm sorry, when you, when you make the parentage of characters so like not right i'm like what are you doing i'm not even gonna tell you which one that's from but it's just like what no i don't know whatever 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 so um hopefully you'll join us with this one i am really excited to read it i wanted to read it this year we nero burned us out on historical fiction but let's see here's in case here's what the back of book one says at 12, she killed her first warrior. At 21, by anyone, she defended her land against an invasion by the most powerful empire the world had ever seen. At 40, she led her people in a bloody revolt and became a legend. Set in a Britain before the Romans came, Manda Scott's thrillingly imagined novel brings the brutal world of druids, dreamers, warriors, and gods to vivid life. The opening chapter in a story of passion, courage, and spectacular heroism pitched against overwhelming odds. Oh, is this not even about Boudicca, the Boudican revolt here? Is this about Boudicca like pre-Rome? Oh, no wonder there's four books. Because I was, I was wondering how they stretch the Boudican revolt into four books. But I suppose, yeah, Nero's not in, this is under Claudius. Uh, okay, so we're going to see Claudius' invasion of Britain, which is probably better than it is in the Nero book. That's really cool. Okay, I'm more excited. I'm more, This ends in 43 AD. Like, Nero, ain't he, he's not emperor yet. That's really cool, then. Okay, all right. Definitely join us for that one. Join us for that one. It's going to be awesome. So, as a palate cleanser from what is sure to be a super heavy historical fiction, we're then going to read a duology, and it's called The Signal Airship Duology by... Robin Bennis and Boosh. The first book is The Guns Above. So I talked about this book way early on my channel as well. And you know what? I'm, I'm working through the TBR, y'all. Working through the backlog of things I've, I've talked about before. And this is about the world's first uh, female airship pilot. It is a steampunk book. And you know what? There's not enough good steampunk either. So hopefully the mechanicals will be good. Uh, and this will be good. Um, but yeah, this, this is, seems like a, a much, a much lighter density novel. It's, it's action packed. This is more like a, an adventure novel, I think, like a more swashbuckling novel, which I'm super excited. So there's only two of these. It's this and the fires below. Uh, so, and neither of them are long, so it will help us refresh and cleanse our palates after the really long, uh, section, uh, of, of, you know, Nero, which it just ends in misery. Go look up the Boudicca revolt. And, um, so yeah. This will be in August and September. So, yeah, join for this one as well. This is a good one if you're like, you know what, Alan, I hate the books that you read, and I don't want to join for those. But you know what? I can stand two really short books in two months. What is this? 350 pages. Oh, glory be. And then finally, because there cannot be a uh, year of read-alongs without K.J. Parker. Um, so I was originally going to do the Two of Swords um, trilogy, but I'm not because I realized that I like watching Parker's evolution uh, as a writer. And his first trilogy was the Fencer trilogy. But his second trilogy was the one that I've literally heard talked about the least, and I think is like the oddest out of all of his works. And that's uh, Boosh, the Scavenger trilogy, uh, book one being uh, Shadow. And I realized, I realized that I did not let you in on, I need to read the dust flap of the guns above. Hold on. And then I'll get right back to Shadow. Or, yeah. They say it's not the fall that kills you. For Josette Dupree, the Aerial Signal Corps' first female airship captain, it might just be a bullet in the back. On top of the patrolling the front line, she must also contend with a crew who doubts her expertise, a new airship that's, un that's an untested death trap, and the foppish aristocrat Lord Bernat. I love foppish aristocrats. A gambler and shameless flirt with the military know-how of a thimble. Bernat's own secret assignment is to catalog her every moment of weakness and indecision. So when the enemy makes an unprecedented move that could turn the tide of war, can Josette deal with Bernat, rally her crew, and survive long enough to prove herself? 
We'll see. Guys, that is three trilogies that are all about war. Or three sets of books. I may enjoy war in books. Ugh. Anyway, K.J. Parker. So we'll be reading this in October, November, and December. Uh, just like this October, November, December, we're reading the Fencer Trilogy. And the previous October, November, December, we read, we read uh, the Engineer Trilogy. And um, so, yeah, might as, well, might as well keep it up, right? So, uh, a man wakes in the wilderness amid scattered corpses and inquisitive crows. He has no memory of who he is or how he came to be there. The only clues to his former existence lie in his apparent skill with a sword and the fragmented dreams that permeate his sleep. The evidence of his past must lie somewhere, but masquerading as a god in the company of the mysterious Copus seems an unlikely place to start looking. Yet as their journey leads north, answers begin to emerge. Each one points to a riddle far more complex than he could ever have imagined, and a truth he may not wish to believe. So, who knows? I don't even know. I don't know what that's, that crap's about. Um, all I know is that Parker, you know, can be super weird stuff, um, where I don't know what's happening. That's kind of like the Fencer trilogy or the first book where I'm just like, what is, what is going on in this book? So anyway, um, so please join us for some, uh, chat alongs. And I'm happy if you want to join any of these to have you on camera. Um, you know, we usually have, I usually have four people on camera. That's how I've done it before. Um, and you know what, if not, then I'll, uh, you know, just whoever in my discord does it, will do it. Oh, and I almost forgot a bonus. Boo, woo, woo, woo. You've just won a bonus, bonus read along. And this is a reread along for those of you who have not yet taken the plunge, who want to join me in one of my absolute favorite things on the planet. And that is the great codes because starting in June, June, July, August, September, we will be reading as a bonus read-along, because it will be a reread for me, but a first-time read for Sal and Anitha and other people who have wanted to read it, and I am super excited, is The Great Coats. Hey, Victus! And book one is Trader's Blade, that we'll read in June. And guys, I know some of y'all already read it, and you never went past this book, and that's fine. You don't have to, I'm not talking about you. There's no reason to put down, I hate it, I hated that book. I'm not reading it, I hated it. Okay, like, guys, we have got to understand that just because you're on the internet, like, doesn't mean you have to share every opinion, like, like on on someone else's on someone else's thing. Like, I realize that I'm sharing all my opinions. That's fine. That's fine. But like, this is you know, don't come in here and you don't have to share all that stuff. Like, if you hate something, that's that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Now, you know, some of some of y'all I know super well, and I know y'all gonna hate it. Evie, go ahead, write down, be like, I hated it. Whatever. Um, yeah, guys, I agree. Like. Chapter 21, no one likes it. No one likes it. I understand. I don't understand its purpose. I don't understand the whole character's purpose that is introduced there. Uh, I, I, I'm not certain that the whole series is not, is not richer without them. However, I still love The Great Coats. I love everything about it. And yeah, is it perfect? No. No. But all of the things that a lot of people don't like, I like just fine. Um, I'm prone to speeches. Uh, I, I, I love, like, speeches about justice. I love Here Comes the Cavalry. I like, um, you know, heroes being drilled down to their absolute core before, before succeeding. And I love what it says about the nature of justice and memory and what we fight for and loyalty and people who are trying to be good in a world that doesn't want them to be. And the power of memory and history and words to sway people toward the path of good. Like Isocrates um, in ancient Athens who taught rhetoric like the sophists, but unlike the sophists, believed that rhetorics should be used to persuade men to follow the path of virtue, not to win political office, which is what the sophists taught. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm certain that Anitha and Sal will be joining me in that. Um, and that'll be, you know, June, July, September, August. Why can't I remember the months? June, July, August, September. Um, and we'll be reading one each month for there. I love The Great Coats. It's, it's just a meaningful series to me. One of the first series that I really, really loved on BookTube. And I one day I'm going to meet Sebastian DeCastell in real life. I have not yet. Um, mostly he's in uh, Canada and I haven't been able to go to the cons that he's been here in the States. 
<coughs> but he's still one of my favorite authors. So you should definitely join that as well. So anyway, guys, that's it for me for today. This has gone way longer than I actually wanted it to. Um, and I'm not super good at um, self-promotion. And, you know, people say that and they're, I, I, sometimes people are disingenuous. Um, I really, I, I don't know, it's just hard. Um, but if you haven't, you should go support uh, Philip and my burgeoning audiobook endeavor. Um, and buy The Way of a Dan audiobook. Um, even if you don't, you know what, even if you don't listen to it, that's fine. <laughs> just just buy it. Like, buy it to support uh, Philip to make it worth uh, giving me an opportunity to um, do it. And I've really, I've, I've really enjoyed it, and um, I'm enjoying recording the other ones. And if you liked it, please tell people. Like, like I, I think I would like to get more work doing it. It's, it's very hard because um, my because of my full-time job, I don't have a lot of time to do it. So Philip has been very, very patient. I think most people aren't, but you know, who knows? Um, I sure wish, I sure wish like KJ Parker got to pick who edits his or narrates his or else. Cause then I just, I would just narrate the first few chapters of folding knife and, and send it to him. So, and be like, Hey, you want me to finish this? At any rate, um, you know, support uh support it if you can and you don't have to um but at any rate thanks guys for watching that's it for me for today and as always information about my patreon and discord is down in the description and i'll see you next time guys mm -hmm.